Okay, let's start on the eye. So I'm going to need my orange pencils. So I've got the Carbothello in there. As you can just match your pencils up with the reference photo. Get a good a good um, reference photo print out. You need a good quality. See that brown there, a pit matches up. I've got like a greeny tinge I can just see around the pupil area. And a bit of blue there where the dark black goes into a blue. So I match that up. So this is, you know, I show videos where I show exactly how to match up colors and that's what you need to do. You need to be able to select the colors yourself. And there's that light blue then on the top. And I can use some white there as well if I want it to stand out a bit more. But the blue, a light blue generally looks more natural as the white of the uh, highlight of the eye because it's usually a reflection of, of the sky above. So sometimes it's cloudy, sometimes the sky is blue. So this is quite a simple eye, only a couple of colours in there, but I think you'll agree on the reference, it looks very dramatic and really uh, gives that punch to the, to the reference, to the drawing and the animal. So I haven't finished any of that fur off, obviously, under the eye, I just decided. A bit fed up now of just doing uh, those type of things, I'm going to take a break and have a go at the eye because once you've done something dramatic then it can, you know, you've got to live up to that on the rest of the drawing. So little circular strokes going in around here, keeping sure that I've got the shape of the eye right. Remember it'll look different on the screen because of that camera angle. But that's the basic colour of the eye, that Carbothello orange going in. Now if you've only got pit colours, you'll find something very similar in those. Or if you've got geocondas, you'll find something similar in those or Karen Dash as well. It doesn't need to be exact. So that's the basic orange of the eye. Now a clean stump to push that in to make it nice and smooth. I certainly don't want any graininess in the eye. This needs to look glassy. Okay, so I don't want no speckles in it. And then I'll come in and I'll start to refine areas. So down here I can see it goes more to a, a, a brown. Okay, so I'm using the pit pencil and I'm putting that brown in there because the eye is not flat. It's not like a disc. Okay, it's, it's more spherical. So we've got things like light acting on there, light at the top and then darkness at the bottom. And I take my time again then and, and blend areas in. The area is a bit too small for my finger to go in, in there so I can use carry on using the stumps. Stumps take a bit of pastel off where the finger doesn't really. So that's the main difference there. Making sure that I keep the shape of the eye correct. So sometimes you've got to re-establish lines like I did then so make sure you don't all of a sudden start losing the shape if an area blends out into another. On the top part I'm seeing just a tint of green up there. It'll always look really flat and lifeless until I get the highlight in. put a bit more of the orange in so when you blend with the stump that generally removes some pastel so to get that vibrancy of color back and re reapplying the orange now I want to go for an even richer orange in the eye and that's where geoconda pencils 
are really very very good they've got lovely rich deep colors vibrant colors in their range they are uh, quite a lot softer so definitely more difficult to sharpen but they're not in the in Europe at least they're not expensive pencils so they're a nice addition to your set as I said for those really vibrant colors Okay, that's pretty much all I need to do with the orange for now. Let's start to think about a bit of green going up and also start to think about the pupil as well. Because once I've got that dark area for the pupil in it, those vibrant areas will look more colourful. So a fairly sharp pencil. You see straight away, as soon as that goes in, the orange looks that bit more vibrant. But around the edge of the pupil, it's quite soft, it's quite blurred. Okay, so I don't want a really hard-edged black there. And now going up from the black, we've got this quite colourful blue. Okay, so I just softened that, just touched it slightly. Put a bit more of the black in place. And then blending that in I decided because I know the white and the light blue will sit on top of that nice and easily and it won't look so stark. Just a little blend around the bottom here too. Now first of all we've got this quite dark line going over the top. You see I'm reserving or waiting to put the light in. I'm not putting it in really early because then there's more of a chance of it getting muddied. So the highlights generally go in last. So starting with the light blue, now I could well go over this with white. I know that the paper will take a lot of layers, but not deliberately not going straight in with a pure white. As I said, more often than not, the light blue usually looks more natural. And I'm also not putting all those little lines in there either, because I'm assuming those, those are lines from the roof of the enclosure or the cage.
Now coming in with the white on top just to get that contrast. So it'll look much more glassy. Okay, that's looking better. So I could um, just get some some of those veins in and then refine it a bit more. So now I've got most of the eye done. I can, you know, put in the other little elements that I'm seeing, those dark browny red veins, they'll make it look even more realistic. I don't want to overstate these so I'm using a really light touch. I'm making sure they're not too dark either. And just a few more touches on the top and I think that's the eye complete. It's a very simple eye. I'll come back to it later on in the drawing just to refine it a little bit more but that shows you generally how I did it. Now if you'd like to see the full drawing it's on my Patreon art channel. This one happens to be tier 2 and of course you get access to hundreds and hundreds of hours of other videos. Hope you've enjoyed this short video and I hope to see you there soon. If you're struggling to draw animals or to improve your art, I can share with you the techniques I've learned over 25 years so that you can avoid frustration and trial and error and start to enjoy drawing and creating straight away. Hi, my name is Jason Morgan. I'm a professional artist and I would love to be your guide on your unique art journey. I've fallen in love with past laws and I'm sure you will too. There's really no other medium that has the vibrancy and color intensity and the ability to put light over dark, that's an absolute game changer for the animal artist. Now on my channel, you get immediate access to hundreds of hours of lessons and demonstrations and you go completely at your own pace. There's absolutely no rushing in my art channel and lessons. Think of it like a video library. You pick the video you like, something that really takes your fancy and you take as long as you want to complete it. Or, alternatively, you can watch my videos, learn the techniques and apply them to the subjects that really inspire you. And you also get new reference photos each month. They're copyright free. You can use them in your art, sell your art, no worries whatsoever. Many of my artists came to me with little to no art ability whatsoever and they're truly amazed with what they're now creating. You could be doing that as well. Now don't think age is a problem, you're really never too old to start learning and enjoying art and many of my students are 40, 50, 60, 70, even 80 years of age. Now my channel is about much more than lessons and techniques. You also get access to my secret, private Facebook group and that's full of members that's literally grown up with my channel. They're super supportive and kind, they come from all over the world. So if you've got any questions, you can rest assured there's going to be someone there really quick with a solution to your problems. Now, with my channel, you're not tied into any contract. You can literally come and go as you please. You can go up tiers, you can go down tiers, whatever you want. And there's a 
tier and a price to suit literally any pocket. Now I've been doing art lessons for many, many years and I really pride myself on trying to create the absolute best lessons and demonstrations I possibly can. I really hope to see you there soon so you can start your art journey and I can't wait to see what you can achieve.